Hello and welcome to my first book recommendations video. Um, this video, these videos, I may actually have it as a separate channel. Not too sure as of yet, but anyways, this is my first um, book recommendations video about four remarkable reads by Black Arthurs. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over each one of these and um, talk about what they're about. And the first one that I'm going to discuss is the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, the inspiring story of one woman's courageous battle for freedom. Um, and this book is by Ernest J. Gaines. This is what the copy that I have would like, but there's other covers um, that are a bit different. But anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and read the blurb on the back. Miss Jane Pittman. She is one of the most unforgettable heroines in American fiction. A woman whose life has come to symbolize the struggle for freedom, dignity, and justice. Ernest J. Gaines, now classic novel written as an autobiography, spans 100 years of Miss Jane's remarkable life from her childhood as a slave on a Louisiana plantation to the civil rights era of the 1960s. It is a story of courage and survival, history, bigotry, and hope as seen through the eyes of a woman who lived through it all. A historical tour de force. A triumph of fiction, Miss Jane's eloquent narrative brings to life an important story of race in America and stands as a landmark work for our time. Um, this story is actually a fictional autobiography, but even despite that, I liked how the character's voice is very authentic and comes through the pages um, when you're reading it. The story is actually set up as her being interviewed by a reporter so she's telling the story to a reporter, but at the same time when you're reading it, it's just like she's telling it to you, the reader, at the same time. But um, this is the first book that I have for this video. Um, I was actually first introduced to the story of Miss Jane Pittman by the movie of the 1970s, um, which my grandpa my grandpa Harvey used to like playing and um, that's pretty much where I first was introduced to this story but then I found out that it was a book so I just decided to um, go ahead and read the book as well but um, I'll have the book and the film linked below if you're interested in checking out the story of Miss Jane Pittman um, the next one that I have is one that I think I read in 2021 or 2020 and it is the complete collection of Nella Larson, Passing, Quicksand, and the Stories. This is what this one looks like. Um, if you're not familiar with Nella Larson, she was a Black Arthur during the Harlem Renaissance. Um, and her, her most famous, famous stories, her most famous stories is Passing and Quicksand. And, um, Passing is pretty much the story about two friends. Um, they're both light-skinned, but one of them is more light-skinned than the other. Um, and is going about in society as a white citizen, which is what the term passing comes from. It was when um, mixed race individuals who appeared to be white was going in society back in the day as um, white citizens. And that's where the term passing comes from and that's what one of the women in this particular story was doing. She pretty much turned her back on her black race, and um, not only that, but she also married a bigot who didn't know that she was a mixed race woman. So it's pretty much like a dark secret that she has been keeping from her husband. Um, so, 
But anyways, the other um, lady in the story, Irene Redfield, um, she's actually going into into society as a Negro woman, but she's also in kind of like denial because she's like in this comfort of ignorance, and um, she doesn't like to face the things that Negro people have suffered with discrimination and lynchings and things of that nature. And um, her husband thinks that their sons should know about all those things, but she's like, I don't want them to know um, what goes on and stuff. But um, that's pretty much the issue that the other one has. Um, and like suffering some insecurities at the same time because of how her friend Claire Kendry is going about and has this much better life than her. And um, so, anyways, they both like have their own individual issues. And uh, eventually, things kind of start to change with Claire and um, she feels like regrets because of how she uh, was with about her black race and not only that but she starts to get close to Irene's husband which Irene finds as like a threat um, but in the end it pretty much ends in a tragedy with Claire like falling out of the window but um the ending it also kind of it's not really clear exactly how Claire fell out of the window but in my opinion I think that it might have been Irene that did it, even though it's not exactly clear of how Claire fell out of the window. Um, there's many different um, interpretations that people have about the ending, but Larson uses symbolism a lot in her writing, and based on that is what makes me think that Irene was the one responsible because of the cigarette and the teacup that she talks about which pretty much foreshadows exactly what happens to Claire when she falls out of the window so yeah that's why I pretty much think that it was Irene responsible whether it was accidental or not um, but if you don't really pay attention to the small details of things like in literature then you might actually miss it but um she does use symbolism in her writing, um, Larson, and that's some of the things that I like about her writing. Um, she has a very, like, flowery type of, of style of writing, um, and it's very clear, you know, based on how she wrote that she was a very educated woman. Um, she paid attention. She pays attention to colors like a lot and how she describes things. So that's pretty much what I liked about her style of writing. Um, in the other book, Quicksand, uh, that is talked about the other story, Quicksand, in this book, is pretty much um, a story about another mixed race woman named Hilga Crane, and. It is a possibility that this particular story was um, based on Nella's, Nella Larson's life herself. So that's a possibility um, based on like her own life as Nella Larson was a mixed race woman as well. But anyways, it just tells the story of how the lady in the story doesn't seem to fit in with society no matter where she goes and she can't seem to escape um, the loneliness that she has um, but um yeah and she falls into like a depression and like doesn't really get out of bed and stuff but I think at the end I think she eventually um, recovers at the end of the story but in a way, I kind of relate it to the quicksand one, maybe not from a race perspective, but just like my personality wise and like how I grew up in school being different from my classmates because of my religious beliefs and um, 
things of that nature. So I did kind of relate to the story in a way, but um, if you're interested in finding out more about this particular book by Nell Larson, I'll also have this one linked below. The one that became a Netflix film was the one called Passing. Um, I never watched it, but if you're interested, you can check that out as well. The third book that I have is I Will Not Fear, my story of a lifetime of building faith under fire by Melba Patello Beals. This one I just recently finished, and if you're not familiar with Melba Patello Beals, she was one of the black students, one of the nine black students that helped to integrate Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1957. Um, and this story pretty much just tells the story of when she was a student and how she became a wife and mother and a news reporter and a writer and she was so many things um, throughout her lifetime but it pretty much just tells the story of how her grandmother inspired her to have faith in God and how um, God worked in her life and helped her through a lot of hardships and to help her accomplish a lot of different triumphs as well in her life. So I just thought this book was really encouraging and, um, and inspiring. Um, I'll have this one also linked below if you're interested in checking out this book as well as um, one of the films because there's a lot of different um, well, there's two different ones anyways I know of films based on the Little Rock Nine students. There was one made in the 1980s and then there was one made in the 90s. But I think the 90s one is better so I'm just going to have that one linked below about the Ernest Green story. Ernest Green was another one of the Little Rock Nine students that integrated um, Little Rock Central High. He was also the first senior to graduate from that high school. Um, that was an African-American student, so. Um, I'll have this book linked below as well as the film, if you're interested in checking out those things. And the last one that I'm going to go over is Mama Flora's Family. Um, a novel by Alex Haley and David Stevens. I think this book was one of the last ones that Alex Haley did before his death, so that's why it's two Arthurs. Um, and David Stevens is the one I think that actually helped to get this book published. But um, Alex Haley, he's the same Arthur that wrote the book Roots. Um, but in this particular story, just tell it just tells the story of. Um, an African American woman's life from her childhood as a sharecropper in Mississippi to her old age in the 1970s and um, it just tells a story of how she pretty much is like the heart and strength of her family. She has two sons by two different men and she pretty much tries to work to get the boys get her sons together and the family together um, as they do have different backgrounds and one of them grew up with the mother and the other didn't. So there's some jealousy that is between, is between the two brothers and she tries to, you know, work through all of that and just get them together um, in the story. But overall, uh, I really liked the story. There is a couple of bad words in the book, um, and it was a little hard to get through, but um, overall, it was a pretty good story. I do like the movie better, though, and I like how the fact that they made it a little bit more family-friendly. Um, but anyways, I will have the book and the film of Mama Flores linked below if you're interested in checking out those. But... That is pretty much all of the four books 
four remarkable reads by black authors that I have for this video and thank you for watching.